Welcome aboard. I'm Captain Wayne Canning, and I'll be your host for this Ocean Navigator video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about maintaining a chain and wire steering system. Chain and wire steering systems are probably one of the most popular steering systems available on your mid-size cruising sailboat. They're popular for several reasons. They're fairly simple and robust and they're easy to maintain. Unfortunately, a lot of boat owners tend to ignore their steering systems until they have a problem. This could be a mistake because it can leave you stranded in the worst of conditions. So a little bit of pre-maintenance on your steering system will go a long way to ensuring a safe voyage. It's relatively easy to maintain your steering system and it doesn't take a lot of time. This is a great Saturday afternoon project that will pay dividends in the long run. Chain and wire steering systems consist of primarily three parts. You're gonna have your helm unit, which has got the wheel on it, and possibly engine controls. Helm unit's also going to contain the chain sprocket and the chain. The next part of the system is the cable as it runs through the boat. This cable normally goes through a series of pulleys until it reaches the quadrant. Some systems will use a conduit for the cable to run through part or all of its run to the aft part of the boat. One of the first things you want to do when checking your steering system is just a basic observation, kind of a touch-feel thing. We want to move the helm back and forth from one side to the other. When the helm hits the end, you want to feel for a nice hard stop there. You don't want that to be too mushy. So you want to work the wheel back and forth. As you're working it back and forth, feel if there's any stiffness or any roughness in any one spot. Should feel the same all the way back and forth. And you shouldn't hear any odd noises while you're doing it. The next thing you want to do is just check the helm itself. Make sure that's fairly sturdy, fairly well mounted, and not flexing around too much. After you've done that, if your helm, like this one, is equipped with engine controls, you're going to want to operate the engine controls. Just move them back and forth and see how they feel. Feel if they're stiff or any, any excessive play feels like it's in there. These feel pretty good. Most helm units have a brake on one side or the other. It's going to be a black plastic knob. You want to operate that, loosen that up, and tighten that down, and feel if it locks the wheel in. On this one, I can tell that one's very stiff, so I think we're going to have to lubricate that. You also want to grab the helm at the base of the shaft and wiggle that up and down a little bit and see if you can note any play in there. If there is excessive play in there, it may mean that the bearings in the pedestal may be getting bad. These are all things you want to check before you get started. If you note any anomalies, just make a mental note of it and we'll come back and check those later. Before we get started, let's take a look at some of the tools and supplies we're going to need. We're not going to need a lot in the way of tools, mostly just some basic hand tools. We're going to need some wire cutting and crimping tools because we're going to need to disconnect the compass wire. We're also going to need a screwdriver and a ratchet and maybe a, a pair of needle nose pliers to help us with the uh, carter pins in the engine controls. Other than that, there may be just a few small wrenches and stuff, but it's not going to take a whole lot. Your basic small tool kit should cover you. We are going to need some basic supplies for doing this job. Edson Marine recommends for lubricating the chain you use Shield T9, which is an excellent lubricant and protectant. They also recommend that when doing the chain rollers, you use just basic 30 weight motor oil. A little dispenser such as this will really help putting the oil where you want it because you don't want to get it all over the place. They also recommend using Super Lube for lubricating the needle bearings in the helm shaft. When it comes to lubricating the bearings, it's a little tough to get the grease down in where you want it to go. So I use a little syringe that I get that's designed to um, be used with West Epoxy systems, and I just fill syringe with some of the Super Lube. This really helps in pressing the Super Lube into the bearings, and I'll show you how I use this later. We're also probably going to want a couple of crimp connectors for reconnecting the compass wire. Maybe a little bit of heat shrink to go over that as well will be helpful. All right, first thing to do is go ahead and remove the compass. We'll take these three screws out of the top. Now, different compasses come out in different ways, so you're going to have to look at your particular unit. Some have metal housings that go over them, and, and most of the time those will just slip right off, and you'll get to the three screws. And the compass should just lift right out of here. You might need to just gently pry up a little bit to get underneath it. Sometimes there's a gasket there. Then we can lift it out. And as you can see, 
we're going to have some wires for the compass light. So what we'll want to do is just go ahead and cut these wires off right close to where they're connected. And now we can set the compass aside. There are going to be four bolts in here. We're going to use a ratchet with a long extension so that we can get in there relatively easily. Sometimes these bolts will get a little bit corroded and may be difficult to come out. If that's the case, a little penetrating lubricant will help. And you want to be careful that you don't drop the bolts down into the pedestal because they can be extremely difficult to retrieve. And that's the last bolt. We can now take off the compass housing. The next thing we have is this assembly here that holds the control units. And as you can see, these are connected to the levers with a pin with a carter pin in it. And in order to lift this unit out, we're going to have to disconnect these. All right, got the carter pins out. Now we need to slide the clavis pin out. Once again, be very careful that you do not drop those down into the pedestal because they will be hard to retrieve. All right, now we can lift off the engine control unit. And this is where we can feel that's a little bit stiff. So we'll get some WD-40 in there and loosen that up before we put it back on. But for now, I'm just going to set it aside. This is the brake assembly here with this being the brake pads and where that grabs on there. So we may want to clean up that corrosion a little bit. And we can see this chain definitely is a little bit dry. So we're going to want to lubricate that pretty well. Chains should be replaced every seven to 10 years. This one doesn't look too bad, so we're just going to go ahead and lubricate it a bit. We're going to use a little bit of the um, T9 to start with and gently squirt in there as we rotate the helm. We want to make sure that chain's fairly covered and get down to where the chain doesn't come across the top. And we'll rotate back the other way. Next thing we're going to want to do is put some 30 weight oil on there. And we'll just once again rotate it over, all the way over, and we'll squirt some oil down into the chain rollers as we rotate it around. And we want to make sure that we get that oil down in there into the rollers really good. And we'll just keep moving that around and around and around. There we go. That will lubricate the chain. The next thing we'll need to do is lubricate the helm shaft bearings. You can see these two holes in here. We want to make sure there's no dirt in those holes. And what we will do is put the lubricant in there and I'll press down on that as I'm turning the helm. And you can feel the lubricants squirting into there. And we roll that helm back and forth. And then we'll move to the forward one and we'll press some more lubricant in there, once again, turning it back and forth. Okay, now that we've got everything lubricated and everything inspected and looking good, it's time to put it back together. So on this boat, we've got this drink holder that we're gonna go put back on. The next step will be the engine controls. And we're gonna have to put those pins back in and I'll put the shift pin back in first. Once again, very careful not to drop anything in. You may have to replace your carter pins if they're a little too bent up. And you don't want to bend the crap out of these carter pins. You just kind of want to put a little twist in the end. Let's go ahead and strip these wires and we will put our crimp connectors on. And now we can set the compass mount back on, get those holes lined up. Now you will note that you may have to watch the polarity on the compass light. Back in the day when they were just incandescent bulbs, it wasn't a problem. But now with LED bulbs, you wanna make sure that you watch your polarity. And before we put that in there, we gotta put our bolts in. So let's get our holes all lined up. And we will put our bolts in. And we'll put a little tough gel on there to prevent that from corroding. First bolt lined up. There we go. And then back on the others. And we'll just stick them in here hand tight for now. Once again, you want to be careful you don't drop anything into the pedestal. And now with the ratchet, we can tighten them up. You don't want to over tighten these. You just kind of want to get them down nice and snug because there's spaces in there and you'll crush things if you get them too tight. They really just need to be tight enough to hold this assembly all together. All right, we got that. 
It's a simple matter of dropping the compass back in. Set our screws in there and we will tighten them up real quick. Okay, very good. Do a final check, make sure everything works good. Shift works good. And we'll spin the wheel back and forth. And we can see how much better that feels now. We'll check the brake and make sure that that's holding nice and tight. All right, that completes this Ocean Navigator video on maintaining your steering system. Hopefully you've learned a few things that may be helpful for you. And I strongly recommend that before you do any long distance passage, or even at least once a year, go into your steering system and check it, inspect it carefully, and lubricate all the parts as needed. Be sure to check out Ocean Navigator Magazine and Ocean Navigator Magazine online. Until next time, I'm Captain Wayne, wishing you fair winds and following seas.